This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You prepared your kids for their first steps. The first day at school, their first dance, that big test, all the wins along the way. With a College Savings Iowa 529 plan, you'll prepare them for even more. Register before May 31st for a chance to win a $1,000 contribution. Visit collegesavingsiowa.com to make the first move toward a bright future. College Savings Iowa. It's how parents get through college. Administered by the State Treasurer of Iowa. Hashtag no music, no intro. Saints Twitter podcast. Also the official podcast of Who That Dish. Feels good to just say that. And the NFL is the best reality show there is. Mm. Far none, bro. Far Far none. none. There's nothing like it. So, you know, the Saints don't have a game this week. We're not previewing shit. But we did want to give you guys content, give you guys an episode to listen to. We know that, you know, the numbers are going to be down. You know, we're not talking about the Saints. Well, we're going to talk about the Saints, but like, we're going to talk about like just NFL in general. We know, uh, we see the numbers, but we see them. We know it's going to be a little lower, but we know that our mainstay listeners are going to listen regardless. So shout out to you guys. Shout out to the people who, the Patreon. Shout out to the people who on the Discord. Um, we got to talk about John Gruden, bro. That's <laughs> shit got hot real quick. <laughs> real, Man. Real. And like I didn't really like I followed the story, but I didn't like pay, like I didn't even really like read what he said closely and shit like that. Um, like I knew about the D. Smith Michelin tire lips and all that shit. <laughs> Bro, tell me why I quote tweeted when I saw that. I was like, was John Green really talking about my lips instead? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of black people felt that way. Like, right? talk about me. You know what I'm saying? But. And then, you know, apparently in New York Times put out some other stuff that came out, you know, with some, you know, misogynist and uh, trans uh, homophobic bruh. slurs. And stuff. All the isms. All the all isms, bro. I mean, he was bat, 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 just hitting all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you okay, so we, we, <laughs> we, we should know that we're in, at, we're in no way laughing at the the like the like he he affected and talked about minorities across the board. Anyone who's marginalized, he, he had on the bra. Black people, gay people, women. It, he he didn't leave anyone out, bro. It's just I think what's crazy in all this is if you I know people have their vendettas against Mike Florio. And I get it. Like, Florio can be super aggy, very annoying. Very, very, very annoying. But there is not a better person in the media that addresses things and topics like this than Florio be- because, one, he's not affiliated with the NFL. He doesn't work for the NFL. Right. Two, he has a law background um, and if you're a Saints fan, and I, I get it, he's he said some things as to Saints fans that has you know annoyed them, but like let's not let's, let's be real. Like when it was he was the only person that came out and said anything when the whole bounty gate situation happened. He was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Weekly, weekly, like weekly, he would put out his little columns running down like some of the minutia and bounty gate. And look, it's not like he had to do that, it's not like he was getting a ton of clicks. You know, it's not like he was just getting tons of clicks around nope. for that. Everybody, you know, because this is before this is before pro football talk really even blew up, right? And it was like I remember I used to read the comments, and people would be like, "Oh, just move on. Who cares? Nobody cares about that." Obviously, Saints fans, we cared about it. We would eat that shit up. So 
you know, it wasn't like he was doing that just for clicks. It was just something he was interested in. He he was interested in trying to find the truth and just like really That's good it. lawyers are. Really good lawyers. That's they it. like to poke holes and ask questions when nobody else is asking that question. Like why? Like what? Yes. What? Why? Who? All that shit. You know? And and so he he was kind of on top of it when the whole Washington football team investigation happened with Dan Snyder and like the workplace misconduct and like there was this whole huge fucking investigation done and then nothing came out bro like not, mm-hmm. not, a, not a single document and Florio was like the only person was like like what y'all you know, not gonna release shit like when the flake gate happened there was like 200 and plus documents of information about fucking deflated footballs but like y'all not gonna put out information when like a whole team owner is under so he was calling it out back in July when when everything kind of came out right with the Washington football team and so now what he's trying to do is he's trying to play like this game of clue and it's like if you listen I listen I listened to a little bit of his podcast and I had to like fast forward when Chris Sims started to talk but it was just like who had it against John Gruden that they leaked <laughs> like it was like it was so calculated because first it was like the the Demar Smith thing leaked right and I was like I got got him like racism it, it, it didn't work it didn't work it was like, <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta come harder than that bro <laughs> like oh he was just talking about niggas nah. <laughs> Like, oh, it wasn't really racist. It was a you know, he was talking about rubber lips. Right. <laughs> so then they, so then whoever whoever this mystery person in the shadows was that wanted Gruden out was like, oh okay, let me fry this, let me fry him for real. <laughs> and everything that's from these emails, always emails, bro. Always emails. Top time people get caught up in emails. Bro. Emails from 2011, the lockout, what John Green was saying to Bruce Allen, um, and then today, like Adam Schefter literally wrote a whole entire article, and he sent it to Bruce Allen before he published it and filed it to ESPN, and he literally called Bruce Allen, Mr. Editor, is there anything that you would need me to add or change in this article? Like... Wow! Oh, you didn't. Oh, you didn't read that one this morning. No, man. <laughs> what? But that shocks. I mean, that anybody no. who follows it, it shocks nobody. It no. shocks nobody. No. I'll never forget. I'll never forget Bonnie Gate when um Mary Jo White or whatever her name was, who was like the lead counsel for the NFL that was like investigating Bonnie Gate or whatever. She was like a former uh former. Yes. Uh, U.S. attorney for the DOJ or whatever, you know, big name. And I remember she brought specifically in Adam Schefter, Peter King, uh, Mike Silver, maybe, I can't remember, but all the big heads, all the big head, not show, you know, NFL media people, you know what I'm saying? And basically laid out the case for Bonnie Gate. Here's the evidence we had. And they all came out like Mary Jo just showed us the most damning evidence, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then, like, the next week, bloggers, old girl from Texas, I forgot her name, um, Mark Florio, they just picked it apart. Like, just tore it up, everything said. But it just showed you, like, like, like if the NFL was a country, like, if the NFL was Russia, you know, these guys work for Russia TV. You Ooh, know what I'm saying? Russia it, television. Bro. It's just, like, state-run, it. it's just state-run television, man. So you got to take it all with a grain of salt. Like, these dudes, like, they... <clears throat> They they know not to bite the hand that feeds them. You know what I'm saying? Can't do it, bro. Can't do it. I mean, I mean, they, they should in terms of like generalistic integrity, but they won't. Right. They won't. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So, I guess the the bigger picture of the John Gruden thing is, and th- this is this is where the pressure is going to be is to, to release release the entire investigation, release all the emails. Uh-huh. Right. Those, uh, those, e- those emails get released. I'm just saying those emails were sent, and obviously he felt comfortable sending them. Yes, 
And then it was like, what? And then the question is like, what was Bruce Allen saying, or what was he responding? Like, right. <laughs> exactly. Like, you can look through it. Like, look, I've been sending emails all my life. You won't find nothing like that in my emails. None. None, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's, so it's like, what's going on with people where he felt comfortable enough to send that type of shit? You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I don't know if you check my texts. That's what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> ain't gonna get on that, though. <laughs> gotta, gotta detonate this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's just, it just amazes me. But, for, man, it just blew me away. You know, because I, I admit to the fans, you know, I just want to apologize to the listeners or whatever that, you know, I've kind of been out of it the past month, not totally checked into everything that's going on like I usually am just with life, uh, just, you know, just do the life and bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm coming around. I'm coming back. Don't, you know, so I, I, I didn't follow this story as closely as I should have. Um, Like, so I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know this stemmed from the Washington yeah. investigation. I was like, oh, you know, why would this leak now? Like, just, you know, a 10-year-old email. So to find out it's leaking because of this, it's like, okay, somebody has it out. Like, who? Why? Why? You know, Greg Rosenthal is always good. like, why is this coming out now? Why is it coming out? I, I don't know. Is it is it is it Davis? Did he want, like, was he looking for an exit code? Here's But here's the thing, though, like, Mark Davis had the email since Friday, right? right. I think it was Friday, and he kind of just sat on them, right? Uh-huh. And then they had they had a game on Sunday, and then like Monday, like it, they came out right before Monday Night Football, Ryan. Like that's how crazy it was. <laughs> like the the New York Times just dropped the story <laughs> right before right. kickoff, bro. Like the rest of the emails, and then like he resigned. It's just. I would say as, as if you're a football fan, if if more of these emails and this entire investigation comes to light, tell you right now, a lot of things in, in this league might topple real quick. And it's one of those things, too, where it's tricky because, you know, at the end of the day, like Roger Goodell works for the owners. Like they don't, yeah. he doesn't, you know, he works for them. Period. But. Is there's like one of the funniest things is after all this happened, like when they was talking to Jerry Jones on like a radio station, Jerry Jones got a hustler, bro. Right? Jerry Jones always talks. <laughs> man, you bet imagine Jerry what Jerry had said. Oh. Calling people porch monkeys and shit. Come on now. <laughs> pick a pick a ninnies and shit. Pick a ninny. <laughs> it's just and then I, I tweeted this. I tweeted this, you know, because we always talk about fandom on the on the show, right? Like this is uh, something that we are passionate about. It's just think about being a Raiders fan, bro. Just think oh. about this, okay? In twenty years, two decades, meaning I was in Texas, like I was still, no, I, I wasn't. Yeah, like twenty years ago, I was still in high. I was, I was like not graduated high school, bro. <laughs> Bruh, in I was, 20, in I was 20, rocking plat, platinum fubu. Got the, the, the yellow and the blue joint. Like, we knew what it was. Right? <laughs> 20 years, your your favorite sports team, let me let me walk it all through, that had one winning season in 20 years, Ooh. relocated from Oakland to Las Vegas. I, but I will say that I, you can't see much of a difference because I was just in Vegas. Um, traveling this weekend, and there are Raiders fans everywhere. But your oh. team moved. One winning season in 20 years. You hire John Gruden back. The first two things he does after he gets hired back as head coach, trades Amari Cooper, trades Amari Cooper, trades Khalil Mack. They drafted Khalil, uh, Colin Farrell, like fourth overall, who's been a colossal bust. Bus. And then this season, you start off three and zero. You know, in the AFC West, got people talking about you, feeling good. And then you lose two straight, and then this comes out, bruh. Man, 
I tweeted, I said, Raiders fans, just just if you want to turn your fandom in, turn it in. Like, <laughs> just go ahead and slide your card. It's fine. Walk away. They, they ain't, bro. They ain't, bro. Raiders yeah. fans, I give them that, bro. They don't, like, they've had plenty of reasons <laughs> over the past 20 years. Plenty. You know, fucking Hugh Jackson uh, trading the mountain for Carson Palmer out of nowhere. They, 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 they went 8-8 eight and eight that season. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just Rotating coaches every year. Tom look, Cable. Look, we, I didn't even talk about the A. You trade for A. B. He didn't play a single snap for you. Hey, hey. I remember A. B. saying them dudes racist. I don't know, man. A. B. Was, <laughs> a. B. Might have been on or something. I'm just saying. But um, bro, like man, like Raiders, and it's just one. It's still one of my favorite franchises, just because it's like I don't know, man. It's just those classic NFL franchises that you yeah. just. You just you just always just kind of got a little soft spot for it, man. It it's just kind of sucks that they just can't get it right, you know. And it's no fault of their own. It's not like they ain't trying. They trying, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, damn, Mark, like Davis, a ten year like when he when everybody knew when he did that, a ten year contract for oh. John Gruden, who you know, who obviously he did well as a broadcaster and he won that one Super Bowl with Tampa. But I never forget like. Since that Super Bowl, he was below 500. Below 500, yep. man. Like, he was a mediocre coach. Mediocre coach. Got blessed with great talent that one year, and they won the Super Bowl. And he knew the Super Bowl opponent scheme. <laughs> it's his hand, bro. <laughs> so, it's like, okay, you give you that, but it's like, come on now, man. Like, the dude was not worth all that. He's been like, like, um... What's his name? What's the wide receiver that played for him that's on ESPN? Um, Randy Moss? No, 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 no. Um, they played for Dallas and Tampa Bay. Um, damn. Oh, big. Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson, yeah. Like you say, he's like, I always knew it was a fraud. And he just always gave me that vibe, like, just a fraud, man. Like, that group just, I don't know, man. It just always rubbed me wrong, bro. I don't know. But, you know, it is what it is, man. And, you know, he, he got to carry that shit, you know, and then people be like, oh, that was 10 years ago. No, not some of that shit was like three years ago. He, it, you know okay, even if you want to say it was 10 years ago, he was fucking 48, yes. bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, what are you I doing? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, tell me that. What are you doing? You know, and I'll take that. And this is for me, who's someone who kind of likes. I'm not going to say derogatory jokes. But I I, I, I I lean towards the offensive. Like, I, I like... Yeah, like we both I, do. I, I, like, it makes yeah, us like, chuckle, right? It like, makes me chuckle. It makes me chuckle if it's good, if it's actually funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Michelin lip shit is not really funny. You know what I'm saying? No. Um, you know, a lot of the comments he said, it wasn't funny. Like, that's just not funny. That's hateful. Um, and for him to be doing it, it's just it's just out of pocket. But it just... I just can't get over. Like, I, I, I really wonder. I need WikiLeaks... We can lead to somebody, man. Like, get them emails, man. Y'all hacking the wrong shit, bro. Like, <laughs> in there, man. Get up in there. Release them emails, bro. Fuck Hillary Clinton. Oh, hacking Hillary Clinton and all that shit. Hack the NFL, man. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> that shit'll be fun. It will, so please, it, please avoid the Saints. Like, can you just. <laughs> got the whole Catholic Church. Man, Bro, why was I just about to say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't touch Greg's email. <laughs> oh, like, like I'm saying, like we we don't need to be, you know, beating our chest about emails. I just <laughs> <laughs> leave Greg's emails alone. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll see what the outcome is. Uh, let's hit on. I want to hit on the Saints. You know, we didn't talk about it in depth during the game when we did the recap against the Washington football team. Also, shout out to Marshawn Lattimore. I know we talked about him in the recap. Six six pass breakups, bro? Bro. Like, that's tough, man. That's tough. Six pass breakups. He is playing I don't either as good or close to as good as he's played since his rookie season. Yes. Absolutely. Like besides the peeking in the in the backfield and, and getting got by like Saquon, um, 
he's he's been he's been unreal. And like we forget that he's playing with like a broken finger, like a broken thumb, right. like insane. Um, insane. Man. But we did not talk about. Well, we got to talk about a punter, bro. Hello. Can we talk? Can we talk about him? Like I, I we did him a disservice when we didn't talk about him on the podcast, the recap show. I don't know how he didn't win the NFC Special oh, Team Player of the Week. Complete oh, bullshit. Sham. He damn near won that game for the Saints oh, with, his won the game. with his exquisite punt, bro. Insane. We would, not, we would not have won that game without him. No. He was literally a part of the defense. Yes. Like, he – oh, my God. That, that was just ridiculous, man. Penn Washington inside their five, I believe, three times during the game, bro. Never been done since 2000, I think, or so. Woo! Shit. Like, about, about as long as the, the Redisons had a winning season. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long time. Like, man, he was balling, bro. Like, and, like, and this is not like it, like let's let's be real. Like, this isn't the first game he's been balling. Like, he's been balling oh. since he's started punting. Like, and I, and, man, I remember I, I was getting to this like this argument. I wouldn't say an argument, but like some person on Twitter was call, coming at me like during Morris's last season last year, and he was like was like saying like putting like stats and numbers of like well according to like the calculation and the data and the stats like he's still the same punter and it's just like just go just go watch just go watch the fucking game bro like just watch it nah man they did the same thing to me when they when they kept Blake on the practice squad I was like ooh <laughs> uh oh <laughs> Mustad about to be out of here everybody was like I mean the pitchforks came out pitchforks came out at <laughs> my neck son like Never getting rid of more stand. I'm like, take it back, Negro. Take it back. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, I love more stand. He is like, love him as a player. Love him as a player in a, in a fixture of the New Orleans Saints. Like, literally came to New Orleans and he became a New Orleanian. Like, I love, yeah. I love those Saints players. The players that come and get the city, I love them, bro. I love them to death. I never, I never, you know, my unfollowed, never, never get unfollowed. Oh, you didn't, you didn't unfollow him? No, no, man. Still with me forever. But, uh... (laughs) (laughs) Like Scott Fajita. I never unfollow Scott Fajita. You know, like, those guys that just get New Orleans, I never, you know, I never let them go. Especially our Super Bowl guy. I just, I don't know. I just never... I get get it, though. I haven't haven't unfollowed Scott Fajita either, bro. No. Yeah, I don't think he tweets, though. But anyway... No, he doesn't. um, (laughs) But it's like... Yeah, man, it's just like, come on, you got to go with the talent, man. I mean, you look at what we're going through with the place kicker situation. Like, oh my god, we we uh, Cody Cody Parker, he <laughs> <laughs> my man came in, missed them kicks, and went on IR, bro. <laughs> they got released from IR in one week, Ryan. <laughs> they said he said he uh pulled pulled something pregame. Oh man, you pull you. I don't know what you pull, bro. It's uh, <laughs> Will Lux it, cannot come back soon enough, bro. And, and I, I hope Will Lux is the answer too, man. Like I hope because uh, man, kickers are just us. Kickers are so finicky. Yes. I saw Move the Six tweeted like that. Somebody asked him. Um, how many teams would give up a first round pick for Justin Tucker? And it really is an interesting question to me because huh. on one hand, I'm like, you know, just he's the best kick in the league, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, bar none. But on the other hand, I'm like, fucking kickers, man. Like, if he could easily get traded and have like two years of the worst stretches of his life. It, and, I don't think, and, like, I, and I don't think we would be surprised just because of like psychological. Psychological right. impact it is a kicking. Like that would be a great topic to talk about. Like, ooh, we should talk about that with, with Lindsey Mitchell. Just like Oh yeah. When you know, kickers and when they get into like slumps and things like that. Yeah, man, because it's all mental, bro. It's so mental. Like they they could be at the peak physically, but it just doesn't matter. So it's like I just I don't I don't even know how you evaluate that shit. Because like they you we see it all the time, like, oh, he's hitting it. 
down the middle from the 50, 58 or during, you know, during warmups. And then they get in the game and they shank it. It's like, here, wow. I, did you did you see the warm up of Cody Parker though? No, he was missing them six, <laughs> which was made was pissed me off. It's like Sean, why, bro? <laughs> like, I would love to know. Like, I don't have the analytics in front of me, but what are the analytics of hitting like a, you know, a fourth and you know a fourth and third or fourth and three versus compared like to a, like if a kicker who show, has shown you in warm ups that he might not have been <laughs> yeah. that great. It's like, it's like I'd rather just take the chance. Oh, uh, but just, just getting back to receiver. Just getting back to to, to Blake Gillum. Like he's just been he's been a weapon for the Saints oh, all season. A weapon, man. And he's, no he's changed games. He's changed field position. Um, and he, I mean, he is. He's going to be needed so much going forward. And I would just say, all in all, and this is shout out to, and I'm bringing this up. Shout out to Mitch, who is on our Discord, which means he's a Patreon uh, contributor who who brought the, all the special teams up. It was it was due to Mitch bringing it up in the Discord. Is just the Saints as 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 a whole has just had a pretty decent special team, a pretty good special teams unit all season. Besides, yeah. you know, Big Creep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fucking no, they've been blocking punts, blocking field goals. Uh, uh, really, the past couple of years, man, it's yes. been a good special teams. Outside the place kicking situation right now, like it's really been a weapon for the Saints. I mean, Deontay Harris as a returner, he's always giving you positive return yardage, man. Like it's, I think last year, I don't know if the stats true or not, but we had, you know, some of the best starting position in the league, if not the first, you know. So, you know, it's 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 been great, bro. Like it's been a blessing. If we could just get that offense <clears throat> to, you know, hum just a little better, just a little better. I know I know it's a sore subject. People don't like to talk about it. Jameis is the best quarterback in the league right now. You know? <laughs> stop, listen, stop, talk about it, bro. Talk about it. I mean you just you, you can't you can't talk bad about the dude, bro. It's like I'm, and I'm not even trying to talk bad about him. I'm just like trying to literally just like look at it, and here's what I think. That's it. Right. Like, it's no, it's no real like, it's no ill will, or I don't have, I don't have any bias against him or for someone over him. It's just like, okay, he's done this well, this well, this well, and this here is not so good, and this is not so good. So I would like to see him get better here. Period. But it's like every time you tweet something, it's like. Oh, uh, you got twelve touchdowns. Great, like, right. like, yeah, I see that. It's like twelve touchdowns, three interceptions. It's like, okay, watch the tape. You know yes. <laughs> he, he, and he, all in all, like he had. And so, bro, I, I was I was walking home, not walking by parked. I was walking walking to my to the to my door and just reading Greg's like description of Jameis's game on uh, Sunday. Perfect. It was perfect, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's literally the Jameis experience in a nutshell, bro. Just right, right. and I don't see just, why people want to just deny it. It's like, oh, you know, he's a different quarterback now. It's like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> he is, but he's look, he's protecting the ball better. Yes. Um, uh, you know, and it's like this is the Jameis experience with Sean Payton. Like, I don't know. It's like. And I'm just not. It's not like a like I'm saying. This is the final. He he's going to improve. I think. I think he's going to improve in the scheme. He's going to be improved when the players surrounding him improves. Um, that's just the way quarterback works. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I I just hope us all just like let's stop being a little so sensitive about it, man. Like, let's just call it what it is and just kind of go through and enjoy it. I'm I'm having fun honestly. Like I'm. In, Kind of, I've gotten to the point where I'm just kind of enjoying the season for what it is, man. Yes, whatever. Hundred percent. I really don't. I have. I don't care whatsoever where this season ends. I really don't. We can end up nine and seven, twelve and six, five. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, but, but, no. That's eighteen games. Twelve, 12, 12, 12 and five. five. Yeah. yeah. Twelve five. Okay. Whatever. Like I don't care. I, just, I don't care. Like I'm just enjoying this whole. Uh, just like you know, trying to figure it out every week. Like it's, 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 out. A, it's a roll. It's, it's a it's been a it's fun a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster. Uh, I feel like as as hard as we are sometimes on uh, on some players on here when they do well, we got we got to give them love. And I, Caesar Reese, bro, 
He was he was on, got the body breakdown. Man, got the got all the body breakdowns, bro. What's up with that? Love to see it, but just like Joey's Joey said, he said, he said, see, you're getting these body breakdowns in like two weeks. All right, Nick, put your ass back at right guard. Put your ass back. You will clap up in there. Keep messing around, bro. It's just, it just, but, you know, we've said off on this podcast that last year's draft class, and if they're good, if, if it was a good draft class or not, and this year's draft class is really going to, Tell us what this team is going for, right? Yeah. Like, and we've seen it. We're we're seeing it with Ruiz, which is which is great because him being good is is such a will be a great thing for the offensive line, regardless of where he plays. And obviously, when Eric McCoy is healthy, then his position's right guard. We haven't seen it from Zach Bond. We haven't seen it from Adam Troutman. Um, you know, we saw a little awakening from Adam Troutman, but like we. We have like Zach Bond strictly is now just a special teamer, bro. Bonfire's been pissed on. It's been Smokey the Bear done fucking stamp that out. Like <laughs> that shit out. Out, bro. They gotta um, figure it out, man. They gotta figure it out with him. Cause there is something there. Like there's something with Bond, but they got to there, bro. If there's it's not a starter, there, there's something to be used. There is, but they're not, bro. Like you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna get cut or traded to a team. I don't know, New England. I just keep thinking New England because he just seems like a perfect New England player where Bill Belichick will find out what he does well. Like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if he's like, I'm not going to say like as good as Rob Nikovich was, but no. becomes like that type of yeah. like defensive player in another scheme. Like, I can see him right. doing well like in New England, Miami, you know, just someone that uses that utilizes his strengths because that the Saints just refuse to do that, which is weird because their pass rush has been Appalling. <laughs> that cluster, at least. Yeah. Appalling. Um, so, Mariska <laughs> was on put on it, and so if if we end up at that Falcons game, that, that first Falcons game in New Orleans, you know, the I think the first weekend of November, bro, we might have to we might have to do like record like a video on our cell phone and just post it to Twitter, bro. Just a, a joint a joint apology to Pete Warner from the Saints Twitter podcast, bro. Uh... Pete Warner, boy, he's like, oh, man, like, that body breakdown today, it was, it was so some, good. It was something, bro. <laughs> it was something. He said, he said the per- perfect term is the economy of movement. Like, mm. he just, he makes just, like, he's not the fastest guy. And, and this is so, like, cliche, like the white linebacker. <laughs> He's not the fastest guy, but he just brings his lunch pail to work. Like he, he just, you know, he just, he just knows where to be. Like you can't describe it, bro. And it's just like boom, he's right there. Boom, there. You know what I'm saying? Boom. No, he's not gonna like fuck. He's not six three, and you know what I'm saying? He's not uh, Stephon, you know, Stephon Anthony, and like that with speed and the size and all that. He's just like right there. I'm like, okay. It's funny. Okay. Like he, to me, he's a linebacker. Like, there were times where Alex Anzalone made, like, splash, splash plays because he just, like, af- he's very athletic, athletic right? Athletic, right, yeah. And can just do things from that, like, that interception he made against the Rams, right, in the regular yeah, season, yeah, yeah. bro. Like, oh, man. Like, he can make that play because of his athleticism. But, like, just down-to-down fundamental linebacker stuff, like, Anzalone wasn't that dude, bro. Like, uh-uh. he wasn't. Like, Pete Warner's like the inverse of him. Exactly. Like, he's going to know where to be, where to play, stop the run. At, I know he was really good at coverage in Ohio State. Um, we haven't, you know, and he made a great play in the end zone um, against Washington football team, too. Uh, all that said, can we get this man a handshake? Can we get Pete Warner a handshake, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> Like every like I I noticed it during the game and I wanted to bring it up on, on the recap show, but like I didn't. And then like I saw it on Twitter, I was like, ah shit. Like it's so noticeable, bro. Like everyone has these like, hit, hit, hit them with the Peel Obama thing, you know. Like, oh. <laughs> um so then the question becomes, and, and we 
I saw it on Twitter a little bit, and I was thinking about it too. I was like, uh, when Quan get healthy, uh, I don't know, bro. I mean, I mean look, here's the thing with Quan. You know, Quan's not the greatest at run defense. You know, what I'm saying Quan, Quan will shoot a gap and tackle nobody. He so was, against the Eagles game, bro. He will shoot that gap and be tackling air. Like he's just. That's just how he rolls. Sometimes it's like some great plays. And sometimes it ain't, you know. And but you know, Pete Werner, he's he's been much better in that area now. Now, now, one thing about Quine, like he would sniff out some shit and go get it. Yes. You know, so, and I don't know if that's a part of Pete's repertoire. Although I'm like, I've been, I, I mean, he moves well, bro. Like he I, does. I, I, he I, does. I, I must take all the crow, bro, because he looks as a rookie. To play like he has, it's been impressive. But not just you, bro. Like we, we, we hated. We like I, I literally was in bed, just like we really got the Pete Warner at sixty, bro. Like <laughs> it was, it was a problem. I think I don't know if I said it on here, but I thought he would be cut. Like I didn't, I didn't think he'd make the fifty three. Like I really, <laughs> I really thought it was a bad, just a bad pick, man. So I take man, listen, listen. I'm, I'm done with linebackers. I'm not even like. <laughs> Evaluate them in the offseason no more. Like I miss, I miss too much. So now I'm just like, whatever, man. I'm, I'm not. I'll pick like you know, I'll target like the big, like the easy ones. But I'm not, I'm not delving deep in these guys anymore, man. Although I, I will say, there's no surprise that Jeremiah. Oh no, surprise. <laughs> None, bro. Joke, joke, joke was dull. <laughs> None. I didn't care how small he was. I didn't care. Well, we don't know where he's going to play. Like, stop it. Stop. Just stop. Um, but we I, I, we talked about in the podcast. We we, we got to see more from who first, bro. We got, we got, I, oh, my God. Like, I know he was in the body breakdown. And, you know. I, Man, I saw that. I was like, you just being nice, Baldy. Stop yeah, just, Nice. Rush the passer, get some sacks, bro. Like, please, please. Um, being that and we were both team hoping, like crazy, which is which is weird, weird, bro. Like that um, that that chart I sent you, like that's yeah. a weird chart. It's a weird. Like, it's for, a, like three of the Saints' defensive ends to get be one of the highest rated double teams in the league. Like, is the interior that bad? Like. What's, it's like, <laughs> it's like they ain't even worry about the interior. It we could be like that's, that's a that's a great point. <laughs> now that you break it up, bro. <laughs> um, but be, being that we do this podcast, one of the gifts and the curses is you know we, we might tweet a Saints thought, right? Just, just tweeting. Just getting some. Just getting out of system. Putting it on the internet. Just tweeting. And then there's just like this barrage, just <laughs> barrage. And I get that's what Twitter is. And I am nowhere near your level because you have like seven thousand more followers than I do. So I can't imagine what your mentions are like, bro. All I tweeted. All I tweeted, Ryan. I just said, you know, thanks to look to trade for. Zach Ertz, Devontae Parker, uh, Denzel Mims, um, Jameson Crowder. You know, just just get get some get a weapon, get another weapon on offense. You know, whatever, because if you're depending on Traquan, good luck. Like, I don't know what the over under is, but if I say if I gave you five. For both Traquan and two first, and I say you take the over or under. under. <laughs> Easily, I take the under. I said it too high. I said it too high. Way too high. <laughs> I should have said. I should have said three to make it actually challenging. Five shit. We might do so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like there was just the barrage of rec replies. No, oh, like, 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 so just stop, just stop, man. So that said, segueing into trade deadlines in three weeks, I believe. I believe it's like November sixth or something like that, first week of November. Um, 
I don't know if the Saints are going to be players. You, you know, Mickey and Sean like to make moves. They they traded for Bradley Roby already. So obviously they're no strangers to making moves. Could A, could you see them going after a player? And two, if they were to, who like give me like maybe a position or player that you'd want them to bring in? I mean, obviously it's wide receiver or tight end. Um, you're probably not going to get a tight end because there's just not a lot of them. Not, not, a, not, not a lot of good ones. I mean, there's Zach Ertz, but, you know, I mean, we've been talking about him for a long time. Um, you know, wide receiver, uh, yeah, I would love Mims. I don't know what's going on there. It's a, uh, I would it's, love, to, I would love a, big, a big player, like a big it's a big yes. body. You know, and if I went small body, I don't know if it'll happen. I doubt it would happen. It'll be crazy. It'll be funny and hilarious. But we talked about it before, man. Brandon, Brandon Cooks, man. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> the archer. Get the archer back up in that brand. Like, look, say what you want about Cook. But he has produced everywhere he's went. Everywhere. At, at least he's done what he does. Like, he. You know, he he's a, he has a particular skill, set of skills, and he does it. Like, every way he goes, he does it, no matter the quarterback. So I'm just saying, and I know it's kind of like a redundancy with him and uh, with Deontay Harris, but Deontay Harris, he plays three, four games and gets a little hammy. You know, no, you know, bro, he, he plays play like, yeah, like it, every game that he makes big plays that is not on special teams, like if just right receiver – he ain't playing the whole game, bro. I don't know. He playing the whole game. Don't know what it is. It just doesn't happen. And I love him. I love him. To death. I love him. Love him to death. But it's you know it is what it is. So I'm like Cook, probably the same way. Cook ain't gonna give you every game, but you know maybe you luck out and get a nice five six game stretch out of. You know what I'm saying? So I would I would love that man, but I you know doubt it would happen. You know salary, draft pick and stuff. But hey, we already got like a little. Thing going on with the Texans is like you know what y'all what y'all got playing. You know? What what if I said to you, and and, I'm, and this is this is a popular one, and again going going to you know Florio kind of stoking the fire, you know Saints Twitter LSU we'll asking the Browns for Odell, bro. Oh man, I, I mean I'd roll with it. I roll with it, man. I just I can't figure out the Saints' temperature on Odell Beckham. Right. I just I just don't know. You know, he's just such a polarizing player, bro. Yes. And, you know, it from I mean, from what I see, he's a good teammate and everything, but he's just such a such a personality. You know, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. I would hey, love him. The, like the, if he just want to just say fuck it and go for broke and just do it, like I'd be all done. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and this is what I and this is why I was tweeting when people were bringing it up is like you gotta you have to somehow convince the Browns because I believe so if I remember correctly he's still on his contract from New York, mm-hmm. but I think he's do like he's like I don't know if it's like a fifteen million dollar like cap number, but you'd have to somehow convince Cleveland to pay some of it. And by doing that, you need to increase the draft pick. Yes, you'd have to. You'd have to. And I and I don't know. I don't know what that what that would entail or what that would look like. Um, I don't know. But it it, it would be interesting. It would be interesting because it's you know kind of just seems like all around the NFC South, you know, besides maybe the Falcons. So you know, with the Bucks and and the Panthers, there's like this this war chest of people, you know, they just add and add and more, add and more. And in a way, the Saints are going to do that just by getting players healthy, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. Like they have, it's going to be a completely different team once the whole team is healthy. And we know that the whole team's not going to stay healthy the entire season, but it's just going to be a dramatically different team. However, I think if there was, because, like, this thing for Odell and Cleveland, it's not working, bro. It's not. It is. It's not. And I just think you kind of avoid, you know, 
any awkwardness in the offseason if you're Cleveland, just say, hey, you know what? We tried, didn't work. We'll send you, send you somewhere. Although, I do wonder. I do wonder, bro. I, I, I don't know why. But sometimes when I get feelings, uh, especially about the Saints, sometimes I'm just right. What, whatever it is, I, I'm not right all the time, but sometimes I'm right. I was right about, uh, as soon as I saw Patrick Mahomes film, I was like, Sean Payton's going to love him. Going to love him, bro. <laughs> just knew it. Um, I had a feeling about ba- Bradley Roby. I really think they're going to try to get Russ this offseason, bro. And I don't know what it is. It's just, maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I, I get that sense. You know, now he's now he's injured. And, oh, uh, the, it's lining up, man. The, the season in Seattle might not go that well. Like, you know, now he might want to go to Oakland because, you know, they might say he have big lips there. <laughs> Might not can't go to Chicago. They got Justin Fields. Cowboys got Dak. Like if you just go through that list, like the Saints are the only team. And so I wonder, like if they look at it, like oh, maybe we gotta hold on to some draft picks. We want to get Russ. I, I don't. I don't know, bro. I don't know. You don't need it. Will you would need it. <laughs> you gonna need it. And I don't know what it would cost. Then no idea what what the compensation would be. A lot. But what like. Tell me what a lot is. Is it is it next? Is it this year's first? It's, it's and, and first to start. You think it's three to start? Start to start. If I'm Seattle, why would I even talk to you? Like, why would I even talk to you without three first? Without starting at three first? I don't know. I man, the, the Texans were asking for three first before Watson's shit came up, bro. And that and he's R2 like first, all two first, and a first round talent. And so, I mean, who's that? I mean, who do we have? You know, Lattimore. Nah, couldn't see, couldn't see it being him. I yeah. and they, they, I don't think they couldn't trade Marcus because, like, he's set to be a free agent. Now, maybe right. they could tag Marcus and then say we'll give you, you know, I don't, I don't know. It'll be a lot. It'll be like, but we know the Saints, man. They'll do it. Like whatever. Like whatever <laughs> maneuvering that would it would take. Like they will do it. Like they will. Sign. They will franchise and tag, tag and trade. They will <laughs> whatever. What? And I, I don't. I don't know. Whatever. It's just this feeling I can't shake. So I wonder as the trade deadline approaches, if that's something that they have in the back of their mind. Like maybe we, you know, maybe we can't give up too many picks because. And I don't know. Do you think teams look think of things like that? Like that's just an interesting. Are, are the are teams in the now, or are they looking like big picture? Like you know, we worry about this season, but maybe we're gonna try to get Russ in the off season. And we gonna some are. Save- I mean, it's not, I think some think like that, but some yeah. don't. I, I don't know if the Saints think like that. The Saints have a high time preference. They just kind of roll. <laughs> like I think, I think part. I think some people in the Saints try to think of the future, but it's Sean's Payton team at the end of the day. They're so, very in in the moment. In the, in the moment, if Sean comes in there in January and says, I want Russell Wilson, let's do what we have to do to get it. They're going to try to get him, man. Like, it might not happen because they got to compete with other teams, but, like, they'll try. Yeah, they will, for sure. Um, I'm going I'm to throw a player out. So, I, I, I still think if, if the Saints can trade pennies on a dollar to get Zach Ertz, like, I know he – People like are like they're like oh it's just Zach Ertz like have you seen our offense <laughs> right like they need that like at least Zach Ertz could like consistently move the chains like right. they need some instant offense like you know what I'm saying like think about Sproles well just that little instant offense instant five yards instant seven yards we need that right now like because we're just not getting it right now you know. And you know, I don't know if his name is fault or if it's office. I don't, I don't know, but we can use some players. Like you know, what I'm saying, like I know that much. I know that. Easy. Um, I'm gonna give a player out, and I I know it would never happen. I don't think it would happen. But it'd be hilarious if it did. Speaking about reunions, bringing people home. It sound like uh, our boy might not. Oh, the, the easy one would be just just bring Jimmy home. Just 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 send Ryan Pace like a six, bro. Just bring Jimmy home. But same team, 
might be some trouble between the Bears and the King Picks right now, bro. Hey. I'm just, I'm just saying, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. on your mind? Wouldn't that be fucking hilarious, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Team Hicks hates the Saints, bro. Hates Hate them. It. Hates them. But if, if you read Jeremy Fowler's ESPN Plus article of just things to watch upcoming for the trade deadline, like he he pit, he mentioned the Bears and and Akeem Hicks, may maybe looking you know part ways. That would it's one I can I couldn't see happening, but that would be a clutch. Trade for the yeah, Saints. It really would be. It really would be. Because he he like we're talking about, and you just you you brought it up right. Like maybe offensive lines are so not worried about our our interior, you know. So everyone else is getting double team. Like if you added the Keem Hicks next to David Onyemata, that frees up. You got you got match you got matchups on the outside now. With your edge rushers that you know you're expecting them to win, man. It's like <laughs> I, know, I know the Brown. I mean, I doubt the Browns will try to get rid of Njoku. Oh, you, you, you know, I love me some David Njoku. Like, what would you give up for him, though? <laughs> he had what he had, a, what 149 yards versus the Chargers, seven catches. I think. I think you would probably it would have to be at least be a fourth. A four? I think a fourth. I think this so. is a four. A four, I'll give him that right now. <laughs> Take this motherfucking four. I think it would have to at least be a fourth. We don't have a third. Nope. Well, we, we do though. Oh, it's a conditional. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no. The, the third we traded for Bradley Roby was I don't we're getting one oh, for yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we so they they basically saw that like it's house money. Like right, right. So I don't would you give a third for Njoku? And then you just don't have you you don't have any thirds. I, I, I'll say this. You got Paulson and Debo in the third, and the Saints draft history's been up and down lately. But to your point. Could you imagine David and Joku in a Sean Payton offense as a tight end? <laughs> Just saying. Um, what about, so let's go around. Uh, go ahead. Well, what about uh, the Steelers wide receiver? Washington. Oh, man, I forgot James Washington even existed, bro. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm like, what's up? You, you know, you know. Big rape slash big big breeze ain't get it can't throw that shit that deep no. <laughs> <laughs> I I love James watching that Oklahoma State. Um, didn't work out. I mean, he made some he's made some plays, but he he hasn't worked out. I, I, he had nine catches this season. I that I would trade like a fifth. That's what I'm saying. That's like fifth. that's that could be something, man, because they ain't been using him at all. He and he requested a trade this offseason. Like right, yeah. That's that's a good one. I think I think that's the one. That's and the one. he fits what he fits what Jameis does too. Perfectly, bro. Like to the T, he fits what he does. Because just imagine, like right now, uh, Deontay Harris is the only one that can really like take the top off of defense. Yes, maybe Kenny Stills, you know. But you put both of them up there, you know. I mean, man, that just opens up so much. Not you know, not even just in the pass game, but just the you know run game and everything. Yep. Just the attack, you know, just the thought of that attack being there, you know. What I'm saying? It just gives it gives your your space, it gives your offense so much more space to work with. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's go around go around the league real quick. Um any, anything happening right now in the NFL, any team, I know I know you again, you've been kind of plugged out, but anything kind of just caught your eye. You know, as we, you know, talk about the league before we end things. I'm curious to see if the Cardinals are for real, bro. Like, mm. I just want to see if they're for real, man, because I didn't really expect them to start. Like, they're the only undefeated, te- undefeated team right now. I didn't expect them to start right there, you know, kind of signing a bunch of Asian vets. But it's looking like the past game is working, man. Kyler looks 
you know, looks like he's taking that step. So I just want I want to see you know how it continues, man, because they could be dangerous. They can, and they, I mean, Kyler has taken that offense to kind of become like must see, must see yeah. offense, bro. Like that shit is crazy. Speak. Let's 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 stick in that same division, and you know you can talk about the injury, especially like last season the injuries, and I guess this season a little bit too, but the rapid decline. And I would say rapid may be strong, but the decline that the 49ers have had yeah, man. since they've been in the Super Bowl has been uh, – it's, it's been interesting, bro. It's been something. It really is, man. Like, it was, like you said, last year was like, oh, they had injuries. You know, they were beat up. Like, it was, they were beat up. I don't know how – I mean, I know they had some injuries this year too. But it's like, is it that bad? Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, you know, was Kyle Shanahan overrated? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, is it, is it I, think, what, I think what we're finding, and it's, this happened to Mike Shanahan. This happened yeah. to Josh McDaniels. It's happened to Sean Payton in the past. But when you give, like, these offensive gurus, coordinators, like, full autonomy to make draft decisions sometimes, bro, Sometimes it don't work out, bro. So true. It's, it just, it's just, it's, sometimes it just does not work out. And if you, if you listen, I forgot who was telling the story. Like, I forgot who was telling it. Maybe it was Adam Schefter. I don't remember. But basically, Kyle wanted Matt Jones. What? Mm. Kyle wanted Matt Jones, 100%. And the time of the Niners trading up to three so early allowed um, John Lynch and the other higher-ups in San Francisco to change Kyle's mind. Mm. And And that, as someone who has known sports and football for a while, if that, if like, if Trey Lance doesn't work out or what, you know, whatever, it's super early. You only had his first start, but that just has the potential to go south. Yeah. Real quick. Whew. Real quick. <laughs> so that yeah, is just, it's such a weird position because you just wonder how much rope Kyle Shanahan has because they've had a ton of losing seasons. And then they and then they had that great season where they went to the Super Bowl. They went to the Super Bowl, so you got like a Super Bowl appearance sandwich in there, one that you almost won, and you just got beat by like Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you just so like you can't even really take anything away from him. like you just got beat by Michael Jordan. But I mean, so, I think I think the one thing you the, the biggest thing you take away from it, and, and Greg said it on the on the Greg Rosenthal said on on the, on the podcast. I don't care how good you. I don't care how good your defense is, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you, when you got someone like Kyler, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Mahomes when he's on, when they are don't at, bad. you good night, bro. Like it's the Browns put up forty plus points against the Chargers, bro. Forty plus, no turnovers. <laughs> still took it, and, and still took it. That makes no sense. Like it makes no sense. That breaks analytics. Yep. <laughs> it does. Oh, it does. Man. Um bro, imagine being a Dolphins friend, bro. You're like, fuck, we drive the tour. Yuck. <laughs> yeah, it's Cole Brian. Is the Cole Brian Flores? Is he really a good coach? Is he nope. really? Man, I've been I've been I, you you know where I I'm know you've been on that for a long time, bro. <laughs> Just, just, just say it, bro. Um, what else? Where, where else do we want to hit? I, I, I'll, I'll say this. Say this. Still not sold on the bills, bro. I'm not. You're not sold on. <laughs> not on them. Not sold on them, bro. I don't know what it is, but you know what? You know what's funny is that the Saints playing the Chiefs last year is now going to be that game where I want to see how good the defense is going against the Bills. Yeah, yeah. This season. Uh, yeah, for real, man. 
Now, if you notice how two teams have been playing the Chiefs, I don't know. I, I wonder if they took something from that Chiefs game, man. Because they've been playing, like, teams have been, like, saying, like, look, we're going to take away Tariq. We're not letting Tariq Hill beat us. Nope. And we're going to let we're going to let the tight end do his thing. And, you know, that's just how they've been playing them, man. You know, they've gotten Mahomes to make just enough mistakes to be in them. You know, just, just enough to play out of the scheme and make some mistakes. Just it's like he's pressing. Play. He's pressing. And when he played us, like, I remember the defense played awesome, but it just when it came to crunch time, and he was just able to make some of the most ridiculous <laughs> – well, you just couldn't even be mad at the defense. It was like, well, <laughs> what you gonna do with that? You know, <laughs> that fucking but, that th- that throw the bucket hard in um, the back of the end zone. Oh my god, that came man, man. I, I I will say that it's the Chiefs are suffering from completely misevaluating Clyde Edwards Lair as a prospect. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Just, just, I mean, I, again, I'm not an LSU fan. I'm not Homer. I'm. That's just he is not the running back. He's been injured some, but even when healthy, like they miss, like that physical downhill just presence in their offense, like they had with um Damian Williams, who's, yeah. now, with, who's now with the Bears. That, that's going from the offense, bro, and I, it, it's hindered their offense. Also, doesn't help that our old friend Spags. He's back. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just doing him, bro. <laughs> which is which is crazy because like it's the same it's the same defense he had last season. Like most of the players haven't changed. Right. It's just it's just it's just it just shows it you go it goes to the whole thing of like defense like. It's so almost impossible to build an NFL team with the foundation being the defensive side of the ball. Almost impossible in today's today's football. Can't do it. Can't do it. Um, Cowboys are for real, bro. Yeah, man, it's kind of annoying, but that offense it's it's, that it's, offense it's gross. Great, it's gross. But like watching that offense play, like seeing those skilled position players make plays, bro. Just man. <laughs> It's, it's Everybody so cooking. Everybody, even Zeke. Zeke cooking. I get um, so jealous, bro. <laughs> offensive line cooking. I mean, with that tight end Schultz, whatever. Like, like, you know, that, like, Dallas can have, like, tight end. Why like, can't blanks. we have a Schultz? Why can't we have a Schultz? <laughs> we did, bro. You know what his name was? Dan Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need is a Schultz, man. That's it. And, and Dak, man, Dak, look, Dak is playing out of his mind, man. That, yeah, man. He's, that, he's, he's, playing, he's, he's also taking game. another step as well, bro. He's playing the mental game now. He's like, yep. I saw it on the week one when they played the Tampa Bay Bucks, and he was destroying Ty Bowles' blitz. Like, yep. he knew where every blitz, everything Ty Bowles cooked up, he cooked it. I was like, man, Dak really, like, <laughs> Dak figured that cheat code out. You know, that like the great quarterbacks figure mm-hmm. out, like, Breeze, Brady, you know, Peyton Manning, and all those guys. He's, he's, Tapping into that now, so that that's dangerous. It is, it is, and they have like a defense that's playing playing better. Um, thoughts on the Bengals? Uh, I need to see more. I need to see more. I, I just want to see them more because they they playing. I feel like they're playing above their neck right now. Uh, I wasn't surprised to see them go to toe to toe with Green Bay uh, because I, you know. If you look, saw the Vegas line, it was like Vegas had, you know, Green Bears a three point favorite. Yep. So it's like, like, Bengals, they got something there, man. And I like, I really, I really think Burrow, if they can keep him healthy, I really think he's, he is the future there. And, and there's no LSU home in me whatsoever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just think, I really think he has the future. They got to keep him healthy, though, man. Like, That's huge, contusions and, he, and shit. Like, they they got to keep him healthy, and he has to be more mindful of keeping himself healthy, too. He, he also does have to do that, too. Man. Yes. You know, and he's going to have to play a certain type of game. He's not going to – he can't, you know, 
he can run around a little bit, but he just got to be careful. He's going to have, just like I said, they said about Dak just now, he's going to have to tap into that. He's going to have to be that type of quarterback. And he's already shown he is. Yep. That Thursday but, night football know. where they brought that cover zero blitz. and Exactly. Like he's, you know, he checked to the tight end quick screen on the outside. Start seeing the matrix, man. The matrix cool. Like he needs to tap into that. That's what's going to make him great. Uh, but they're interesting, bro. Like they better. Like I was worried that they was going to pick number one overall again this year. Yes, all. yes. Man, I'm not worried about that. Now. No, no. Um, you know, it was looking like they might pick pick on the one overall. I know what you're saying. Uh, they're actually two teams, bro. But the, them Jags. <laughs> I don't see no light in the end of the tunnel, bro. Bro, I, I think I think they can. I think who they play this week. Whoever they play this week, I think they might get one. I think they play the no, it's not the Jets because they they're just overseas. Whoever the Jags uh, play this week, I think they the have Dolphins? a chance. I think they play the Dolphins. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Yep. They might have a chance. Might yeah. have a chance. Think they might get the Dolphins, bro. I do because that's a, that's another team when we we kind of hit on them too. It's like wouldn't shock me in three weeks if Deshaun Watson's on the Dolphins, bro. <laughs> Would not at all. Wouldn't be shocked, bro. Like as gross as it as it would be, and just, ugh, it wouldn't be shocked. Not in not in the least bit. Um, and they can pull it off too. Yeah, I mean, also we, we talked about it with Greg, bro. Colts one and four. Mm. They got to get, you know, Carson Wentz plays over 75% of the snaps. Ugh. A first-round pick going to the Eagles. I'm sorry, man. At that point, like, uh, the GM has to step in. Yep. <laughs> like, I know Frank Rice like, oh, I'm going to start my quarter, but no. No. <laughs> no, nah, nigga, no, you ain't. <laughs> you ain't. You know what I'm saying? Take that up with me. <laughs> um. We we if, if they if the Colts continue to lose they they have an easy part of their schedule for them. If they continue to lose though, and that draft pick be looking like a top three overall pick in the draft. Shit, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we we hit on some teams. Um, any anything else? Trying to trying to think of think of teams. Seattle's Seattle's kind of a dumpster fire. Man, what's so weird? Antonio Brown looked like 2018 Tony Brown, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> of course he is. Just disgusted, man. It's, it's why, so disgusting. Why wouldn't he be? Like, he looks fresh. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like, and it's like the number three where it's, it's, uh, <laughs> just, it just pisses me off, man. <laughs> and we brought him in. Remember, we brought him in. He shot a fucking sure music do. video. Sure do. Video, bro. It's you know what it's fine because I, I I yeah like I, I I don't love the player either you know what I'm saying but yeah it's like, so it's it, it worked out better for my for my fandom but it, yeah. it but like it could he have gone to like anywhere else that isn't the NFC South like anywhere bro you gotta come to damn Tampa <laughs> hate it hate it bro all right we we talked about a lot we hit on a lot um there's no no preview show. Uh, we might, you know, we'll see what happened on Sunday. We might talk about some of the, you know, just some of the games, red zone, see, see what's popping off on Sunday. Um, hey, hey, we talk about the Saints now, so anything can happen. Might be some more emails leaked. God, doing the merch. I'm about to say, yeah, don't matter. Mercy pod. Um, but thank, thank you guys, as always, for listening uh, and being a part of you know, of this community. We really appreciate it. Um, if you're not a Patreon, become a Patreon. Um, and just, just like I said, you know, I, I said it on Sunday, but be good to each other. Be good to your, you know, your friends, your loved ones, all that. Um, and just, and just take care of yourself and, and just find fucking happiness in this life, man. Just it, please. However you can. Uh, also, I, I, I asked Ryan this through text message. He didn't. He didn't answer me. Are you coming to the Falcons game? Okay. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I'm definitely gonna be down there. All right. All right. Tell me everything I need to know. Hey, you already know, bro. Hundred percent, no. But with that, let's get out of here. With that, we're out.
Peace. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Bakers, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Bakers worth it every time. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.